Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is King. Jesus rules. And Jesus reigns. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Pastor Phil and Barbara, the Godfather. Thank you so much for extending an invitation to us to be here. It's, it, it's been a, such an honor and privilege for us to be here with, in your presence. You know, uh, when I think about you and Pastor Charles and uh, you, Miss Barbara, uh, Mrs. Barbara, Pastor Charles, Pastor, uh, Sue, and you guys are such a great example. You know, uh, your walk with God, your commitment, you know, at your age and still have a fire for God and you just love God and you love people. It's not ubiquitous. It's not everywhere. So we just count it as a privilege to be able to just even just stand beside you and to be in your presence and to, to preach here. So we thank you so much for everything that you've done. So you know, you know, we draw a lot of strength from you. <laughs> Amen. So, and I want to thank um, everybody that worked so hard the last couple of days uh, to make this conference possible. And I want to thank all the other speakers who spoke. And, uh, you know, we'll la later this afternoon we'll be leaving. But we love you all. Amen. Thank you for your support. Amen. So, um, anyways. Um, just very quickly, let me sh sh uh, give some things away. By the way, we thought that we were out of marriage book, but then suddenly this morning, the bunch of them that show up on the table, I don't know how that happened. It was a miracle of multiplication. <laughs> so if you didn't get the books, they're still, you know, they found out more books. So they are available. Um, I see somebody waving in the back there, you know, like waving the airplane down, uh, waving. So this is a wonderful book on marriage. I'm telling you, it's a page turner. Um, it's a PhD dissertation. Uh, there's so much into this. It's, I know it's 500 pages, but it's full of revelation. And if you read it, it's going to transform your life. There's a study guide with it to get it as a discount price. And so much I can say about it, but this is, okay, that lady over there in the back, she's waving really hard, standing up. I'm sorry, brother, but she has more emotion and energy than you. <laughs> So I have to go with her, amen. <laughs> and uh, so this one also is, is one that we thought was not, was not here, but we, you too can be used by God, released in the supernatural. So uh, sometimes uh, people ask me, how can you hear the voice, so, uh, the voice of God so accurately and flow in the gifts? You know, most of my secrets are in this book, amen. <laughs> Mike, there's one. Okay, it's back. If you want to learn to, uh, to, oh, here we have two people standing up, but one is waving really hard. Uh, look at who's waving. Uh, she's waving two hands. Maybe she's gonna win. <laughs> Give it to who? To who? To him? Elliot. Elliot. Okay, Mama spoke, so you know I'm sorry. You are lost because she just said, uh, "Give it to him." So, uh, so I'll give it to you, sir. So. Um, Okay, yeah, so you too can be used by God, releasing the supernatural. This book, it's powerful. I'm telling you. Uh, we did a conference in India, trained 3,000 pastors, and gave one of well, every book, uh, give, give one, one of these books to each one of them. We've heard testimony. It's like going to Bible school. You know, that we have a detailed expose of every gift of the Spirit. Teach you how to administer deliverance, healing, signs and wonders. How to flow in your God-given authority. Uh, you learn so many things. There's even a chapter here on how to raise the dead. Not that there's a, just uh, the only way you can do it, but in our experience and, 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 and from a biblical approach, how you can raise the dead. Powerful book. You too can be used by God. Release in the supernatural. So I'm going to give this to you because Mama said so. Thank you. Amen. So she, <laughs> and then this is a great book um, called Keys to Receiving Your Miracles. Twenty-eight things that you can do to position yourself to receive your miracle. All right, sister, both hands, both hands up there in the back. Great book. You can have that. And, and then uh, this is the, the 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 MP3 on the camels. I give it to you. This is my number one Facebook supporter right here. 
you know, my amen corner. She's always <laughs> encouraging us, writing on, on the apostle. There are 10 messages, you know, uh, on this MP3. Uh, so you can get, you know, I only get a chance to speak a couple of times here. You know, thank, I thank God for the opportunity, but there's so much more. And we're going to drive this a little bit further this morning, but I'm going to give this to you. But if you love the message on the camel and you want to get the other dimension, you can get the MP3. So after the service, I'm going to be in the back signing books and shaking hands. And, if you know, you can stop by. So praise be to God. So um, let's go today uh, in Genesis, Genesis, uh, Genesis. Genesis 22. Let's start at Genesis, uh, Genesis 22, 22. I know you read it, you heard it so many times, but it's always good to, to build uh, the foundation. Even when we teach prophetically, we always want to make sure that it's within the confound of God's word. Amen. And very, very important. So Genesis chapter uh, 22. If you dare, say amen. amen. If you're not there, say please uh, wait for me. If you don't have a Bible, look next to someone who thinks that they're more spiritual than you because they have a Bible. <laughs> please don't raise your hand. That's not an altar call. Genesis uh, chapter uh, 22, beginning on the... Um, 15 verse, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself... So to say by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you've done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, in blessing I will bless you and multiply and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Amen. And then uh, verse uh, chapter 24, 24. Uh, we're going to start a little bit differently this time. And verse 1, now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Somebody say all things. Very important. And then, uh, so verse 2, Abraham said to the oldest servant in his, of his house, who rule over all that he had, please put your hand on the matai. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take, that, that you, you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanite among whom I dwell. All right. And so that's very important. I want you to see that. And then let's, let's go a little bit further um, and read uh, uh, 63, 63. And Isaac went out to the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, the camels were coming. All right? Uh, Genesis 25, 5 and 6. I'm sorry if I'm rapid firing. I need to get to the message. And Abraham gave all that he had. Somebody, all that he had. Say, all that he had. To Isaac. But to Abraham gave gifts. But, uh, but Abraham gave gifts gifts to the sons of the concubine which Abraham had and while he was still living he sent them eastward away from Isaac his son to the country of the east amen um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written curse is everyone who hang on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles to Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through faith. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And had raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Uh, 3 through 6. I apologize for going through fast. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Amen. 
and 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 Deuteronomy 28 speaks about the, the blessings, you know, we're blessed going out, blessed coming in, and so forth, and so forth. And there'll be other scriptures. But right now, let's just stand up if we can. If you can, I would just encourage you to stand up. Amen. And I want you to raise both of your hands towards heaven. And let's make a prophetic declaration this morning. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I come before you, I boldly declare that I believe in the supernatural, I believe in miracles. This morning, Lord, I ask you to give me eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive, a will to obey, and faith to act. In the name of Jesus, I take my position in Christ. And I take authority over every spirit that does not confess the name of Jesus. Command them to leave this place. And I declare that this place is an open heaven. The spirit of God is free to move. The angels of God are sending and descending. They are going to and fro to execute the commands of God's word. Preach Holy Spirit. Teach Holy Spirit. Prophesy Holy Spirit. Heal the sick God. Do what only you can do. And take all the glory in the matchless name of Jesus. Can you burn with a shout and say amen? amen. Tell your neighbor be seated but don't be defeated. Tell your neighbor the camels are coming. The camels are here. Say, but you got to unpack your camel. Or unpack your camels. So um, we establish, you know, this concept very well. The last couple of sessions. Uh, we understand that the choosing of Isaac's bride is one of the most beautiful story that has ever been recorded. We understand that there is the narrative that there is the explanation of the narrative, there is an illustration, and there is an application of it. We understand that in the story we have the facts, we have the figures, we have the reference, the record, and the representation. That Abraham is a representation of God, Isaac is a representation of Christ, um, uh, Rebecca is a representation of the church, and Eliezer, the servant who goes out, is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit, that in this particular narrative that Abraham, as he obeys God, he's challenged to give up his only son, and in, as he obeys God, then if, as he was tested, he gets this prophetic word that reveals an intelligent design about his future destiny. And this is where we are in Genesis 22, verse 16, where the angel of the Lord calls Abraham out of heaven for a second time. And he tells him, because you've done this thing, because you've done this thing, you know, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiply, I will multiply you. So we did a little etymology word study. Understand that the word blessing is the Hebrew word barak, which means to bow down, to worship and in adoration. So God said to him, because you barack me, I am going to barack you. I'm going to bless you. Same word, to bow down and worship in adoration. But we understand that God is of the higher order. That God, thank you for helping with my microphone. God does not bow down, does not bow down to us. But literally what God is saying to him, because you made, you made me first, I am going to, um, because you made, you made me first, I'm going to make you first. Uh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to rain down accumulations of blessings on you. I will multiply you by the myriads. I will multiply you by 10,000 million. I will bring victory to your house. We understand all of that. We also understand that uh, none of this can happen unless Isaac gets a wife. All right? And that Rebecca is the fulfillment of that. And, and while they're waiting on the manifestation of the promise, Isaac goes out in the field and he's meditating. And then behold, the camels are coming. So the, the, the Rebaba blessing, the Rabi blessing, arrive riding on the backs of the camels. So we say that a camel then prophetically is a 
transporter of God's blessing is a mechanism that God will deploy to bring about the fulfillment of his word. Camel comes to us in forms of people, in, in forms of enemies, in forms of circumstance that God will use, all right? And we then begin to discuss the fact that, you know, if you have a vision and a destiny, you're going to need, you know, not just a vision, you're going to need resource and you're going to need people. And that then God then will, a camel then is a destiny helper. It is someone that God will use to, you know, help to bring forward your, to midwife your blessing, so to speak. So we discuss the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers and we begin to talk to you about the different types of destiny helpers that we have you know the divine connectors the uh burden bearers the uh, men and women of influence you know people who by the by their result and their success and experience their gifting have become uh, captain of industry gatekeepers of structures and system in different kinds of spheres uh, so we talk about people of influence, talk about gifted men, and we talk about burden bearers, and so forth and so forth. We profile the destiny helpers, um, and, and, and so then we start to talk about, you know, if your camels are here, how to unpack your camel. And we give you, you know, one of the keys is honor, honor. Learning how to walk in honor, humility, being industrious, going the extra mile. And we're gonna continue in that vein this morning. Talking about things that you need to do because we explain the concept of the prophetic advantage. That the prophetic gifts comes, you know, and has an advantage. You know, one dimension is revelation, but the other dimension is the creative. That it has the, God uses this gift to change season and to, to release uh, creative miracles. Where things that were not there before, you know, will happen. Uh, you know, we look at Hosea. Understanding that by, the, by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, uh, you know, God, God got Israel saved according to the word. So the prophet didn't do it, but God used the prophetic ministry to release the prophetic advantage. Second Chronicle 20, 20, believe in the Lord your God. You'll be established. Believe in his prophet. Uh, you will prosper. God ties the prosperity of the believer to this gifting. So there is a prophetic advantage. Yesterday we move in prophetic acts, releasing and activating this word. But there are practical aspects that we need to have. Even though we understand the prophetic advantage, which is a top line blessing, but how God is going to release things and shift things. But there's a bottom line responsibility. There are things that we have to do practically. How to take this word, this revelation, and work it out. So, and we call this unpacking your camel. I tell somebody, you got to unpack your camel. <laughs> you got to unpack your camel. Somebody say, my camels are here. But I got to learn how to unpack them. So Abraham is our teacher this morning because he went through this thing for 65 years. And there are some tremendous principles that we can learn from him. How he walked this life, you know, he's a giant of faith. And so one of the first things that we, we have to understand here, because now when he's commissioning Eliezer and Eliezer, you know, can start to engage with him. You know, he asked Eliezer, you know, uh, put your hands on my tie and make sure you, you swear to me that you, you're going to take, you're not going to take, you know, a wife for my kid among these Gentile people. Because he's, he's uh, you know, he's well stricken in age. He's 140 years old and he's still not giving to the pressure even though the word has not come to pass. Come on, somebody. So, in other words, he's blessed. The scriptures say he's blessed in all things. Uh, but, you know, he believes so strongly in the power of the blessing. That even though what, you know, what he's supposed to have has not yet manifested, he's making his servant to swear to him that there will be no compromise even if I'm not here. Because he understand the power of the blessing. Now, you know, you know, we have a miracle ministry. We see people heal 
all the time, on a weekly basis, and that's not an exaggeration. Hello? Even virtually on the internet, when we have our program, and Zena is here, she's following us on Clubhouse, that's why she's here. I mean, I mean, this morning, you know, we had a recap session, you know, every four weeks, the fourth week we do a recap session, we have a session called the Miracle Report. Those are just testimonies of people that were healed online. And we heard testimonies this morning of different healings. We get healings all the time. So no, I don't want you to hear, to, to think that I'm coming against healing ministry because this is my bread and water. Amen. So I, I love the miracles. I love the healings. And I love all of those things. But I'm going to make a statement here today, this morning, is that the blessing is more powerful than the miracle. Well, Charles Finney said there will be no revival if Mr. Amen, if Mr. Wet Eye are not present in the meeting. And I say there will be no revival if Mr. Amen, if Mr. Hallelujah or Mrs. Gloria are not present in the meeting. I wonder if Mr. Amen woke up and came to the meeting this morning. I wonder if Mr. Hallelujah came. This, I wonder if Mrs. Gloria is here. I'm going to say something to you. The blessing is more powerful than the miracles. Hello? You need to get this out. I love miracles. I love in the supernatural. This is my alley. But I'm telling you, the blessing is more powerful than the miracle. Am I not right to say that if you are blessed with a good health, that you don't need a healing? Am I not right by saying <laughs> that if you are blessed with finances, that you don't need a financial breakthrough? Come on, somebody. Am I, <laughs> glory be to God. And so Abraham understood this blessing because the blessing is the system of God. And it says Abraham was blessed in all things. That tells me that you can be blessed in one area and not be blessed in another area. In other words, my finances can be blessed, but my relationships are struggling. Hello? In other words, my relationships can be blessed, ah, but my health is struggling. That means I'm, in, I'm blessed in one area, but the other area, come on. In other words, I can be blessed in a good marriage, but my money is acting funny. Come on, somebody. But I believe that there's a level of blessing, the Abrahamic blessing, that you can be blessed in all things. Come on. That not just my money is blessed, but my relationships are blessed. Come on. My children are blessed. My ministry is blessed. Come on, somebody. Hey, God is about to release an all thing blessing that is coming over you. It is the system of God. And the Bible says that we, Come on, if Abraham, a pre-Christ man, uh, is blessed in all things, uh, but if you are in Christ, uh, you are Abraham's seed uh, and heirs uh, according uh, to the promise. Uh, oh, there is an anointing that is coming over your life this morning. Oh, the candles are coming. Simply means that God is going to release a force multiplier that is going to complete the cycle of blessing. This ain't the first time that God used an animal to release a blessing. May I refer you to the famine? Hello? Out in Israel at a certain time, and God used a raven to feed the prophet. You know, there's a famine in the land, but the prophet is not going without. Because one of the uh, benefits of the prophetic anointing is the ability to provide in times of need. When other people are going without. Hello? Believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established. Believe in his prophet, you'll prosper. Elijah call out a famine. Everybody else is struggling, but he's not going without. Because God has a mechanism, a provision in the middle of a crisis to bring about provision for him. And he touches a raven, which is a scavenger bird. Come on. 
in its nature is not to share. Think about the degree of difficulty and discipline that the bird has to go through because his genetic code has to be altered and he has to have the discipline to know this is not for you but this is for the prophet and the bird said amen and goes out and bring the food. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I'm telling you even some of the most difficult people, stubborn people, unbelievers, God can touch them. God can touch a Pharaoh, come on, to say bring Joseph bring him out of a season of limitation into a season of prosperity and let him be a prime minister. God can touch someone that does not even know him, that does not even love him, that does not even love you and God can use them and change them and cause them to be a provider. Hey, not only the camels are coming but the ravens are coming. Come on somebody. Shout glory three times. And as good as that raven is, he is limited in his capacity to bring the supply of God. Thank you for your support. Well, Elijah, I can only bring one stick at a time. I only have one beak. I can, I can grab two loaves of bread because I only have two legs. And I got, you know, my beak, my beak is loaded. My legs are loaded. But that's all I have. Hello? So you're only going to be blessed in one dimension. That's one season. Hello? So now, God said, forget the raven. I got camels. <laughs> Come on, somebody. A camel is not limited. Come on, somebody. Now, glory be to God, it's a force multiplier. Hallelujah. And all around thing blessing Abraham was blessed in all things. In all, somebody say all things. All things. Somebody say all things. And it says, and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but to uh, Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but Abraham gave gift to the son of the concubine. How can you give all to Isaac? And still give gift to the sons of the concubine. Hello? In other words, sons of the concubine, any wagon, you can drag off the property, go ahead, it's yours. Any cattle, you can take it. But Isaac, on you, I'm going to put the thing on you that made me great. I'm going to put the mantle on you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And Abraham, Isaac, and them, they have something on them. That they can dig a well anywhere in the desert. That well will spring up. Come on, somebody. Why? Because there is a mantle on the blessing on them. I'm telling you, the blessing is a system of God. The, the, the way I can explain it to you is that you can take a balloon, okay, full of air. Take it in the biggest Olympic swimming pool in the world and put it on the bottom. Go to the biggest ocean and bring it in the bottom. The moment you let go, that thing will make its way back up to the top. Oh, my God. That's a picture of somebody that is blessed. The devil may try to drown your finances. Drown your relationship and drown your health and bring down your ministry. The moment a thing that he has brought you to rock bottom, come on, the blessing just starts to move and you go right back up. Come on, somebody. Hey, Abraham, blessings are mine. Oh, oh, we are blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This is the system of God. God and it's going to function in your life no matter where you are but you got to understand the power of the blessing this is what made Abraham said I'm 140 years old but I refuse to compromise oh put your hands on my tie and swear to me that you're not going to move from your position because it's a position of blessing oh we are seated with Christ in heavenly places when Christ Christ ascended. He, he rose far above principalities and powers in spiritual host of hell, of, 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 in spiritual host, uh, spiritual host of weakness in heavenly places. And he made us seated at the right hand of God with him. And that's the position of the blessing. Yeah. 
Shout glory. glory. And the whole battle of what you're going through is a battle between your position and your condition. Hello? Now, we go to the United Kingdom a lot. Be there a couple of times, you know, in October, November, and all of that. And sometimes we drive. We have a base in Belgium. And we don't usually fly to the UK. We drive. But you got to realize that as you drive, when you come to the UK, you got to change your mind completely. Because it's a whole different system of driving. So you got to change your mind. You gotta, you know, and the Lord has used me mightily to increase my wife's prayer life. <laughs> stay on the left, baby. Stay on the left, and especially the roundabout is really the most dangerous place where you have to turn around like that and then exit. Sometimes you see me turning around a couple of times because I couldn't figure out that one time. Man. Let me take another lap. Come on, somebody. Because I got to navigate with this new system. Hello? And sometimes to walk with a blessing, you have to understand the system of God. You have to read, you have to change your mind. You have to reconfigure your mind to tap into everything that God has for you. Hello? And that you cannot function the same way as you would otherwise. You have to reconfigure your mind and reconfigure the way you do things. When we're in England, we have to change everything. Hello? Because first of all, every car, the steering wheel is not on the left like in your car here. It's on the right. And when they drive, they drive on the other side of the road. And so if you're going to get all the benefits of everything that they have in the UK, you have to change the way you live your life. And that's the same thing with you and I. If we're going to stay in the place, if we're going to get the blessings, you got to understand the power of the blessing and how the blessing works. That's what made Abraham great because he understood the power of the blessing. And if you're going to unpack your camel, you're going to have to change your mind in terms of how you view situation and how you approach life. Because it's a battle between your position, shout my position, and my condition. Now, if the queen of England, okay, bless her soul, she's dead. Now they got a new queen, king. I said queen, king, Charles, her son. Hello? Now, if he's happen to drive, which will never happen, because they have drivers. They drive sometimes? Okay, thank you. I stand corrected. I didn't know that. But they usually have servants all the time, and they rarely drive. Now, let's say the king is driving, and he gets pulled over by a cop because he is doing a lot of zigzag driving. Thank you for your collaboration. Going to the left, going to, okay, so trooper just pulls him over and say, and then he comes to the, uh, to, by the driver's side, and says, oh my gosh, it's the king. Maybe he had a little bit too much to drink. I'm not advocating drinking. I don't drink. But he had drunk too much. Let me ask you a question. Does the fact that he's drunk changes his position as a king? Hello? Being drunk is a condition. Being the king is the position. Hello? The condition does not change the position. So this is very important because a lot of us, the reason we're not tapping into this blessing and unpack, to unpack your camel, you need to understand the power of the blessing. Because some people are struggling with this concept. You have to understand the power of the blessing. But to understand the power of the blessing, you have to understand the power of your position. Because your position is always greater than your condition. Hello? I am not a sick man trying to be healed. I am a healed man. That's my position. That the devil is trying to make sick. I am not a broke person trying to be blessed. 
I am a blessed person that the devil is trying to make broke. Come on. I am going to collaborate with the system of God. The blessing because I understand that what God promised to Abraham, it is automatically mine. I may be broke right now, but I know my camels are coming. I may be struggling right now, but I know my camels are coming. I may be facing a giant right now, but I know my camels are coming. My company is not where it needs to be but I know but my camels are coming my camels are here I am going to unpack my camels by understanding the power of the blessing so in Acts chapter 3 Peter and James and John they're going into the temple at the hour of prayer and there's a man there that has been paralyzed for years hello and this man, he's looking at them, expecting to receive something. Because Peter and John said, look at us. And here's what he said. Silver and gold I do not have, but such I have, I give unto thee. Hello? So, in other words, you think that what you need to get better today to be happy today is silver, is gold. But let me reconfigure your paradigm. That's not what you need. I got something else. I got the power of God. <laughs> because if I gave you the silver and the gold tomorrow, you'll be back right here. But if you get a new set of legs, come on. This is your deliverance from this limitation, come on. You think you need the silver. You think you need the gold. But what you actually need is the power of God. Some of you think, well, if I can only get a husband, everything will be fine. If I can only get a man, everything will be fine. If I can get him, I need him. If I only get, if I only get, if I can only get, no, 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 no. What you really need is the power of God. And when you have the power, the power will give you the man. The power will give you the blessing. The power will open the door. The power will will give you the favor. The power, come on. Hey, the power, the blessing is in the power. And when you understand the blessing, you will have the power. Shout glory three times. And the interesting about this is that this man was probably disappointed. When you're a beggar and somebody say, look at us, you probably expect a gift. Hello? But then he says, silver and gold, I have not. So he was disappointed. But guess what? The next thing that came. Oh, but such I have, I give unto thee. Oh, my gosh. In other words, his greatest miracle happened on the other side of his disappointment. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Some of your biggest miracles are going to happen on the other side of your disappointment. Hey, I know a door was just shut in your face. Ah, but when one door closes, a bigger and a better door will open if you are in the system of God and the blessing of God. But just hold God's hand from the closed door to the next door because something else is going to happen. The camels are coming. The force multiplies supplier is coming. Hey, multitudes of camels shall cover your land. In other words, multitude of delivery system will cover your land. Multiples of God's way to bless you will cover your hand. Hey, you are blessed in the field. Blessed coming in. Blessed coming out. Blessed in the valley. Blessed in the fight. Blessed in the middle of the storm. Blessed, blessed, blessed. The camels are coming and the camels are here. Multitude of delivery mechanism are going to be released. Oh, it's going to come in one way and the other way from the north, the south, the east, and west. God has more than a thousand ways to bless you. Stop limiting him to a disappointment of a closed door. Shout glory three times. So number one, understand what the blessing is. Understand the power of the blessing. Refuse to compromise. Stay in your position. Don't move from your position of faith. Because the camels are coming. I said the camels are coming. 
The camels are here. Say, I unpack my camel by understanding what the blessing is, by staying in my position. Number two, after you understand the blessing, the power of the blessing, if you're going to unpack your camel, stay in the place of the blessing. These are very important principles, okay? Because if you uproot yourself from your position, the blessing won't work for you. Hello? Abraham was well stricken in age. And Abraham said unto his oldest servant that rules over all things, put I pray thee thy hand on my tie. That's not the weird thing, okay? This is the way of doing covenant. Please, don't go put your, your tie. Ask, ask a lady to, man, don't go ask a lady to put their hands on their tie unless they're your wife. Thank you for your support. Well, Gipe said, put your hands on my tie. Thank you for your collaboration. I know that sounds odd, but when a man... You can do that with your wife all day long. Ooh, yeah, that feels good. Thank you, Facebook. Stop distracting me. When a man put the hand under the tie, when a man did that, that was an act of covenant. It was, it was an intimate act to say, my life is under the line here. When I give you my word, I will die before I break my word. Okay? Very, very important. And it says, beware. Look at the intensity in which Abraham speaks. Beware that you don't, do not bring my son back there. Because the servant said, let's see for prayer adventure that she doesn't want to come. If I find a wife, you know, today, you know, if, you, if you're hunting, thank you for your support. You know, you didn't have Christian mingle. They didn't have Christian mingle like today. Where you can Photoshop yourself and give yourself a six pack and, you know, remove all the pimple on your face and, do other things and say, voila. <laughs> it's called bait and switch. <laughs> Thank you for your support. If you're really going out and dating, that person you're meeting is not the real person. That's their representative. Yeah. The real person stay home. Please don't raise your hand. It's not an article. You're going on a date with somebody and all they order is one French fry. You're like, man, I'm dating an angel or something. And then after, the, after what they got you, you go back and eat with them. They order three hamburgers. <laughs> Bait and switch. Please don't raise your hand. This is not an auto call. So Eliezer said to Abraham, for pre-adventure, suppose she doesn't want to come. He says to him, beware. He almost like you can hear the emotions when you read the text. That you will not take my son back there. Hello? So Listen, Abraham not only understand the power of the blessing, but he understand the concept of staying where God has called you to be. Staying connected to the promise. Woo. Staying connected. He says, whatever you do, don't take him out of the land of the promise. Don't separate him from the blessing. Listen, there's a spiritual principle here for you. Don't leave the place that God called you to. Amen. Hello? Because sometimes you hear people say, well, I got to do what's better for my family. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do what's better for your family. But make sure that your decisions to move, to move from a church, to change job, to move to another city, to quit your career, to retire, make sure that it's not a decision that is emotionally motivated or circumstantially motivated. Hello? Well, the price is rising, the money is shrinking, the jobs are ending. I might mean, just go ahead and get out of here. Hello? Make sure you can do what's best for your family, but make sure that you're not emotionally led. Make sure that you are led by the Spirit. Hello? <laughs> this, is, this is very important because think about just the magnitude of what I'm saying. If Isaac does not get married, because Rebecca represents the future. Hello? 
There's no Rebaba blessing. But here's what I like about Abraham. He does not allow his future to take precedent over present obedience. Hello? I am not going to allow my future to take precedent over my obedience. I am going to stay where God told me to stay. Be faithful with what God told me to do. Hello? Listen, apply this to your own situation. If, you know, when God says to you, do this, don't worry about the fact that your future is at risk. Hello? If God asks you to say something, to do something, there's a blessing in it, even if it's hard at the moment, temporarily. It might be hard. Hello? Don't worry about the fact that the future may be at risk. It's God's job to figure out the future. It's not your job. Your job is to obey. Now, faith is. Not tomorrow, faith is. Today is the day of faith. Today is the day of trusting God. Stay connect, connected to God. You don't leave Jesus. You don't leave your faith. No matter what, you stay because it's the place that God is going to bless you in ultimately. Listen, it's more than just being born again. Stay where the divine association is, where God called you. Hello? If that job is a, it's a, it's a source of divine supply, stay with it. Stay with the place of divine association. Stay connected to your church. We have so many people jumping from one church to the next. Church hopping. And why is that today in the body of Christ? You see so many ministries try to reconfigure their existence to match with a cultural trend. Hello? Well, we're going to have one hour services now. We're going to have 45 minute services now. Three fast songs, two slow songs, a sermonette for Christianette. The government smoke cigarette while they're surfing the net and drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> Hello? And no wonder we have such a pathetic, anemic, spiritual believers. COVID expose us. Because so many people were not prepared. The, the, besides of the uh, COVID pandemic, there was another parallel pandemic called a fear pandemic. And the reason why there was a fear pandemic was because people were not spiritually strong. The reason people were not spiritually strong, because they were not strongly fed spiritually. Hello? Well, you know, since COVID, COVID changed. Can you realize one third of Christians across denominational board have stopped coming to church post-COVID? Hello? You hear the, 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 the story? It was the best of time and the worst of time. COVID for some people was the worst of time, but for some people it was the best of time. Hello? Because you could either be an egg or a potato. You put these two in hot water, your perspective changed. The egg that looked fragile became stronger. The potato that looked strong became soft. And so we have a lot of people who look like potatoes. Before COVID, that got weak during COVID. You have a lot of people that look like egg before COVID, but actually they were strong. Thank you for your support. It's because the church, we start to configure our existence instead of staying true to the message of the gospel. Stay connected to your church. Stay in the church where God planted you. Hey, Stay to the, in the divine spiritual supply. Don't just go to the church closest to your home. Go to the church closest to the Bible. The mark of a great church is not just its sitting capacity, but it is its equipping capacity where there is an allowance of the Holy, uh, for the move of the Holy Spirit to move and where the, the, the full counsel of God's word is being taught. So you can be strong because man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Stay in the place of divine supply. Stay connected because the promise is connected to the soles of your feet. 
Joshua, every place the soles of your feet will tread upon, I have given it to you. Hello? As long as your feet are connected to where God has placed you, there is a blessing there. There's a camel there. There's a supply there. There's a multiplication there. But you got to stay there because eventually the camel showed up. Shout glory three times. This is very important here. And I'm telling you right now, this is critical. Because this system of God works everywhere. The blessing works everywhere. But you got to believe. Now, I travel around the world. Um, and sometimes people, in some places, people have played a trick with me. Uh, I was in the Middle East. Um, in 12 different cities in Pakistan. I know many people who go to Pakistan go to uh, Lahore. It's like a lot of Christian there you can get a, a great meeting and photo ops. Oh, we preach to 25,000 people. We, I know all of those things. But there are other areas. We were like in 12 different, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm better than others because I, I was not just in Lahore, but I was even in Quetta on the Afghanistan borders and, you know, some other things I'm not going to say because this meeting is on, on the internet. Different places and you travel over there. There's a, it's very regimented. You have to know what you're doing in some of the places where we went. I was only allowed to arrive in the night for security reasons. Stay where I was staying the whole day, not come out so they wouldn't know there was a foreigner there. And then in the meeting at night, we ride in the car with people armed with AK-47. And they said for you know terrorists to kill you, they have to study your pattern. So. They, you know, we always change position in the car and route to travel. And when we came, the way we did these miracle meetings, find a Christian person who owns a piece of land that had, uh, that had a fence, a big fence around it, and screen everybody for suicide bombers. They advertise the meeting as a big black man that is going to come and pray for miracles. So thousands of people show up. And we are amazing healings and miracles and different kind of things taking place in every city. And then... The moment the meeting is over, we jump in the car and left town because that moment you remark. So, so when we finish, 12 cities, 12, some of them villages. So I was going to take my flight the next day. They said, sir, you work hard. And we want to take you to the American embassy for dinner. I was like, wow, praise God. They're taking me to the American embassy. So I dress up. I like to wear a nice suit. And they came to pick me up. And so we're driving into this huge compound with tall walls. They're searching our cars for explosive devices and all of those things. And as we pull into this compound, I was shocked. I see the golden arches <laughs> bearing witness that the influence of Rolno McDonald has reached the Middle East. I was like, come on, guys. All of this is to take me to McDonald? They say, yes, sir. We call McDonald the American Embassy. <laughs> Come on now. We're here at McDonald. And that, that has happened to me tw two times. In Denmark, I was doing some meetings in Denmark. They told me we were going to have lunch at the American Embassy. But this time, I was a little bit more prepared. I said, are we going to McDonald's? They say yes. <laughs> so I didn't dress and all that stuff. So I know you all make fun of McDonald's, but I tell you sometimes, with the kind of food they give you sometimes, oh, there are many times we have said, thank God for McDonald's. Hello? We're in China. They ask, they give us chicken feet. By the way, whoever is cooking there in the back, I just want to thank you. This is a, you know, that... If I knew some of the stuff that they were cooking, if I have seen the menu, I'd probably preach shorter. I wouldn't do that six-step series that Pastor Charles was talking about in one session. <laughs> because my food, my, my love language is food. I love to eat. Thank you for your support. So, but we, we're so grateful for McDonald's because... Some of the food that they, they, they give us sometimes in some places, you're like, I mean, I was in the Philippines. They served this uh, 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 egg with a baby chicken in it. And they said, that's their delicacy. I was like, please. I didn't sign up for this. I'm a missionary, but I didn't sign up for this. 
Thank you for your support. I saw the picture of the colonel when we pulled in earlier. Take me to KFC. Thank you. So the point I was trying to make about this is this. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. If you order a Big Mac, Big Mac, two meat patties spe on special sauce, chopped letters, come on, cheddar cheese, pickle onions, on a toasted sesame seed bun. I got it down. I had so many times. Thank you for your collaboration. And a Big Mac is the same in Pakistan, in France, in Denmark, in Belgium, in South America, been to 123 countries, everywhere you eat a Big Mac is the same. Why? Because of what I call the franchise mentality. What is a franchise mentality? A franchise mentality has a system. It's the same, somebody say it with me, same image, same process, same product. Hello? Same, so everywhere you go, golden arches, same image. Whatever they're doing in the back there, same process, same process. Whatever you're getting, same product. And it works everywhere. And I want you to understand that in the kingdom of God, we have the franchise mentality of God. It's the same God. It's the same Savior. It's the same Holy Spirit. Are the same angels. Come on. That are going to produce the same result. It doesn't matter where you are. God can unleash the camels. Shout glory three times. Now, Apple came out with an iPhone several years ago. Everybody went crazy. iPhone. You heard about it? iPhone? Oh, yeah. Something special. iPhone. I mean, people lining up, spending the night fighting. It's my position. Camping to get an iPhone. And after doing all of that, two years later, there's a next generation iPhone. Oh, my gosh. Then there's an iPhone 4, 4S, 5, and then 6 came around. Woo, it's a big one. iPhone 6, you got something special going on. iPhone 6, oh, yeah, big one. That was one of the first big one. Oh, now they went to 8, 9, 12, 13, 14. It's coming out this September. And you go back with your one iPhone 1, iPhone 6, you're like, let's go home and pet the dinosaur. <laughs> you look so cool back then. But now this, why? Every time they always have something called a system upgrade. And then why is it that every time you upgrade your iPhone, suddenly it slows down? It doesn't work as much. Maybe they're trying to get you to buy a new one. Hello? And so, you got, what, what, what iPhone is that? Six, twelve, ten. Oh, what? Which one? You know, so people ask questions. Here's the point. There's a difference between a company called Apple and an organization called the Kingdom of God. Hello? Apple keeps coming up with system upgrades, a new version of the product with better feature. But the Kingdom of God does not come up with new upgrades come on somebody we are not coming up with a new holy ghost hey there's a difference between christianity and every religion every religion has a temple call it a church or whatever you want to has a minister call it a rabbi an imam a pastor or whatever you want to they every religion has a holy book call it the quran or whatever you want to but the difference between christianity and every religion is called the holy ghost 
Come on, we don't need a, a new Holy Ghost. We don't need an upgraded Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost was there at creation. In the beginning, the earth was without form and void, uh, and darkness was over the earth, uh, and the Spirit of God was hovering, uh, and God said the Holy Ghost was there at creation and helped create it. Oh, he was there at Pentecost. The grandmother of all revival, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one accord when suddenly there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind and they were clothed with tongues of fire. The Holy Ghost was there. He was a center of every revival. Every city has a home team. Every nation has a capital oh every earthquake has an epicenter i want you to understand the center of power the center of every epicenter of revival is called the holy ghost and the holy ghost has the power to help you produce in every city in every state in every culture i don't care what they said about hampton virginia oh Camels can come over here. Eliezer is a top and shadow of the Holy Ghost. He led the camels from Abraham to Rebekah. He found Rebekah. He brought Rebekah. He led Rebekah back to Isaac. Eliezer, oh, the Holy Ghost led the camel, brought the camel. All you need is the Holy Ghost to help you. He is the helper. He is your destiny helper. He will bring the camels to you. He will make the camels bow down. And he will help you fulfill your destiny. Come on, stand up this morning. There's so much into this. Shout my camels. I come in. Shout out and pack my camels. I stay in the place of divine association. I understand the system of God. I understand the power of the blessing. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. Abraham blessings are mine. The wealth is mine. The healing is mine. The favor is mine. The anointing is mine. The open door is mine. I am not a doubter. I am not a feeler. I am a believer. I believe. Therefore, I receive. The blessing is mine. The breakthrough is mine. The open door is mine. I believe. I receive. My camels are here. I unpack my camel. I unpack it now. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and shout out to God. God bless you. I'm going to be in the back. Amen.